what's up guys so today I'm going to see about changing an o-ring on this starter I believe it's got a little bit of a leak and I've got uh, two new o-rings I got one from my other bike just in case I ever have to do this again but since I own two of the SVs but anyway um, I'm gonna see if this is the problem I there's no drip or anything um, I've never seen anything I was just last time I was changing the oil there was some wetness above that and that's the only thing that I could think unless there's some kind of gasket in between the cases it's leaking which I doubt it's probably just that starter o-ring but I've got the book open here and it seems pretty simple um, there's like 10 steps or something but anyway um, <clears throat> I'll see if I can show you what I'm talking about here see right up on top of there there's just like a wetness to it if you can see that and that's not the wetness I was worried about on that starter because anything could have got on that but there's a bit more up on the frame up there that you can kind of see there so I'm gonna take this apart and hope that that's the issue and hope that nobody's ever had this off and uh, uh, changed it and hopefully it's that so it looks like I've got two bolts. I've got to unhook the battery and maybe a few other steps. Um, but it should be fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to have to take this belly pan off. And then I'll get going from there. I'll put you on the tripod so you can kind of watch it in fast motion. All right, guys, that belly pan wasn't stock, so I really didn't worry about showing too much of its removal. Um, anyway, so you want to support your motorcycle, disconnect the negative battery cable, pull the black rubber boot back, remove the starter cable retaining nut, and disconnect the starter cable from the starter. So we're going to do all that right now. All right, so the uh, battery cable is unhooked, so next it says to remove this black rubber boot, slide it back, and we're gonna take this terminal off of here. All right, so pretty much I got the two bolts out for the starter and it just says to remove it. So I imagine I'm just gonna kind of work it this way and kind of wiggle it. And there it goes. All right guys, I got the starter off. Um, I didn't realize there was so much oil sitting up in the top like that. Maybe it's because I had the uh, bike leaned over. It did say to have it on a level surface, but um, I didn't see a super need for that considering I wanted I was going to be working on it on the, you know the side of the bike that uh, it unbolts from but anyway um, I'm gonna have to put a probably a quart or so of oil back in the bike and I was gonna take this apart and check it but I forgot that uh, I can actually test this why it's not on the bike because I was worried because on some older uh, well they were actually probably generator starter generators for old tractors um, when I was taking this off, of course, the terminal broke off, and now the washer's still on there, and the terminal's still there from the starter wire. But what was happening is this entire thing, I'm not going to spin it a bunch, but it was, you can see it, the whole thing spinning all the way down to where it goes inside there. So I was worried that it may have ripped some wires or done something weird in there, but it, it, it's actually still good. Um, I pretty much just got a jumper box here. Um, I'm just going to buzz it real quick, and you can see, but it actually still works fine, so I don't think there's, it's not, you know, like a starter generator, I guess, so... You can see there it starts and spins fine. It sounds okay. Um, but I was thinking about taking it apart just because that was spinning and I was worried about it. And I didn't want to put it back on the bike without knowing. But since I've tested it now, I know it's fine. I'm just going to have to replace the terminal on the positive cable, which is pretty simple. Um, but I was really also kind of shaking it. And you can hear it's moving a bit, but I don't think anything's bad in there. I just think it has a a little bit of play but I will read a little bit further in the manual and see if it says to check anything like that but pretty much the o-ring I'm replacing is right around here and that's what was holding all the oil in the bike before I uh, took it out 
but now that I'm going to replace this, but now that this is off, I can actually see behind it more and I can see if this was the actual leak or not. I mean, it is wet around there, but that could just be, um, it could just be where, um, it was coming out whenever I pulled it off there. But anyway, I'm going to replace this seal. I'm going to clean this up really well and then I'm going to replace this seal and then I'm going to check more onto the bike. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get this cleaned up and back on the bike. All right guys, so I really didn't see any uh, specs on the, about any looseness in here. It just pretty much shows you how to take it apart and inspect the O-rings and inspect the armature and, and uh, all that. It doesn't really say much else about replacing anything except the O-rings. I imagine these probably last for a while and they just need a good cleaning. Um, and I can hear something loose in there, so I'm really wanting to just kind of buzz this apart real quick and uh, see what it looks like. So I think I'm just going to take that apart because I am going to have to replace that terminal, so I'm not going to be riding it anytime soon. Um, but I'm going to grab what looks like to be like a 6 millimeter, possibly. So I'm going to take this apart. I really just want to make sure that that's not broken or something in there from spinning because really what's supposed to happen this nut's supposed to hold on your your positive for from the bat from you know the battery and the starter system the other nut's supposed to hold that tight and keep that from uh spinning so i think the last person took this off probably didn't put any uh anti-seize or something on there or that or tightened it way too tight um so now it's kind of snug to the other bolt and you can't really get anything in between there. I tried to put some needle nose, but you know needle nose aren't going to hold it very well. You can't really get anything in between there because mainly it's supposed to be this nut off first then you can tighten that or loosen it, whatever you got to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these bolts all the way out. I just don't want to get down the road and it not start then I'm like well I should have took that apart to see if anything was broken. These are usually fairly easy to uh, take apart. You just want to make sure that you follow the book, and it's got plenty of diagrams in there for it. So, plus, if you haven't done this before, it's really good to see what's what's inside here. You can see there's even O-rings on these that you don't want to lose. Like this side came out, this side did not come out yet. So I'm going to try to pop it out. There it comes. That way I know that I'm not going to lose these and they'll be right on the bolts. And of course anytime you're putting these back together you want to put a little bit of uh, grease on them. Uh, this inner one needs motor oil on it. But these, since there's no oil in there, you can probably just put a little bit of uh, possibly uh, some red grease or some blue grease that you have in a little can. Put that on there. That way those will stay nice and uh, firm. And they're the exact same bolt. so. No matter what happens, you're not gonna loot, you know, switch them around. So, pretty much the two bolts come out. Um, this top part, kind of right here, will come right off. And I'm thinking the armature may come out with it. I'll just kind of push it all through with it. And it'll, you'll feel some force because there's magnets in there, and it's gonna hold this armature. And it looks extremely clean, it looks really nice. So I'm just going to wipe it off because I did just get a little bit of uh, oil on it. You're going to have this come out with it. Um, this will probably be stuck in there and look weird and you won't know where it went. But it pretty much just goes on the end here. And then it locks into those ridges in the bottom. So, so there's that. Now I can uh, look at that and clean it. This end just pops right out. There's pretty much, I believe, two washers here. It's like there's one. And there may only be one there. Uh, it shows two washers, but there may be one in there still. Alright, so all of this looks fine. I'm just going to sit it here. You don't want to bang it around. Don't sit it on nothing hard that's going to scratch it. Um, this little plate here will come right out. And you can kind of see your terminals. Those little things right here pushing out, right? right here and here those are what wears out and that's what rubs on there you can kind of see they've marked them A and B my B is a little bit shorter than my A but they still got a bit of life left on them so I'm not going to worry about them they're kind of just held in there with some little uh, springy pieces 
and pretty much just pull them out and replace them so it's not too difficult so now you can see up here where this is um, it's not nothing broke so that's good there is actually a lot of stuff down in here though um, it looks like possibly some carbon um, I would say that probably came off of well it's definitely not on there so possibly some carbon got built because it is quite dirty uh, on this end you can see it's and it may not be carbon it's probably just uh, probably just the uh, wear when this wear is a lot of dust in there and it could also be like there could have been a spacer there I'm gonna look at the manual because there might have been a spacer you can see it's kind of cocked to the side so I'm gonna see if there was a spacer there that kind of held it um, if there was it feels like it was plastic or a hardened type of plastic so I can't quite tell but it looks like there may have been something that went around that to keep that from spinning it's really hard to tell but I'm gonna have to take this out and get it all uh, cleaned up yeah this is the side with the two rings on it not the other side are the two washers but pretty much this is fine so I'm gonna sit this to the side um, and then the rest of this is be what I clean up I probably won't touch this I mean, it's a little bit dusty but I really don't want to mess with it and you can kinda of dust it off a little bit but you don't want to mess with it a whole lot looks like in here we've just got a, uh, a little bushing that that spins in to Mitsu, Mitsuba starter brand everything looks okay in here so I'm pretty much just gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna really look at up the diagram really well to see if there was a piece around this nut here because I'm gonna have to still get that off because obviously I've got to replace that so alright guys so I figured out what the problem was like I was saying um, these are supposed to connect to a terminal in here and this isn't supposed to spin because what's supposed to happen that's supposed to be like that a couple of insulating washers and then a nut on there and that stops that from spinning then you've got your bolt to attach your your uh, starter cable lead to and your other nut and that's supposed to come off there easy you don't want to torque that down to the point where you're breaking this because I think what happened is somebody's torqued this and it's broke that in there um, so it was it was barely hanging on whenever I got to it and it was too tight to get off so pretty much when you loosened it it spun this whole thing and what's supposed to happen here is this just kind of sits in here there's a little notch that it fits in so it only will fit one way and it sits like this um, on the other end of this is a wire here and that wire there is supposed to attach to the to the bolt here you can see it's kind of coppery there that's where it's supposed to attach to so it was definitely uh, unattached and I don't know how it was actually working it must have had like one little thread left so pretty much I'm gonna have to uh, either buy this new with the bolt or I'm gonna have to um, solder this back on and then get all the insulate and washers because you can see here this right here this copper is supposed to be up there quite a bit and it's supposed to be connected to that then you kind of put it all there and tighten it down and, and it's supposed to have another piece in here that keeps it from uh, spinning while you tighten it and then you can get it tight and then you can put your put it back together so I guess pretty much I'm going to order I might as well order these o-rings new the two here brand new I'll order them um, I will see about ordering this I don't know if I can get this as an OEM part or an aftermarket part so I'm going to try to get a new one of these or possibly I'll just reattach that it shouldn't be too hard but the main thing is I need to get this little seal here um, that kinda goes on the top of here and that's like a, just a water seal there it's like a rubber piece and then I've got another piece here that kinda broke apart um, it's just an insulating washer that goes in between everything but I'll have the, the diagram to uh, to go by because you can see here on the diagram there's supposed to be the bolt uh, insulating piece which is broken um, another plastic piece the rubber piece two insulator pieces um, uh, another washer uh, another washer and a nut and then the other nut 
So I'm going to have to get to ordering a few of these and then we'll be putting this back together. A little bit more than I thought, but I want to make sure it's done right because starters are kind of finicky. So if, you know, if that's like that, it's not going to work right. But anyway, um, I'm going to get to ordering parts and then we'll see what it's going to cost. And when I get them in, we'll finish the video.